we would we would never advocate for this. But there are massage parlors which are Ayurvedic, for example, and which are beauty salons, but we just don't know as a tourist to Nepal. Beauty parlors, uh, beauty parlors, and massage parlors are two different things. I think massage parlors are basically in areas like in Tamil and uh, Jata and Asan area and Basanpur area. But beauty parlors are, you know, everywhere in the, in, in one uh, one uh, uh, small area. There would be about 20, 30. But beauty parlors are quite open. It's not like massage parlors where children are actually hidden in cells, uh, up, uh, up in the cells. Only when the uh, cl client comes, they are brought down. But now the guest house and also is coming up with uh, prostitution. Uh, I, I hope that you certainly get the CNN videos. You will certainly get it from us. But I hope everyone of us here will sort of you know, publicize it so that very soon we will pay you as the CNN videos. Excellent, very touching thing. Uh, one, one thing I would like to, I know that it used to be India trafficking in India, but now from your talk, I understand that it's becoming sort of back to Nepal as well with various things. Uh, th this is not a suggestion, but I just wonder that in the past sort of two months, I've been seeing uh, Swami Ramdev Ji actually trying to get rid of uh, all the bad things about about India, attacking the politician, attacking people who are making money through uh, you know illegal means. I just wonder whether. Uh, Without going in a very publicized way, it would be a good idea to just have a good chat with Swami Ramdev Ji to see if he might be interested in helping my girl in, in some way about stopping the trafficking. I mean, I, or maybe you may have approached him as well, but I just thought because he's trying to uh, get rid of all the evils in India, maybe once he know that some percentage of India uh, bad things is through the Nepalese girls, so maybe he might be able to sort of assist on that. It, it's just something that came on my mind. Okay, thank you. He's retired, he's Sorry, I didn't say my name, sorry. Yes, Sorry, Prasad Please let me know, uh, tell you that uh, in our awareness campaigns, we also use uh, um, different religious leaders to aware the people in their own way because we feel that religious leaders, uh, the people listen to religious leaders rather than to us. So we are using the religious leaders also, number one. Number two, uh, uh, talking about Ramdev, uh, Guru Ramdev, which would, uh, he knows it very well. All the Indians know it very well because their law says giving a house or taking a house in a public place, public place for prostitution is illegal, but all the brothels are in public place. All the uh, uh, brothels are in public place. So it's not uh, it's not a hidden thing that uh, Swami Ramdev should not know. He knows it. He knows it. So if it's uh, illegal in a public place, then he should be able to tell the uh, government to stop it. But they will not stop it because the turnover only in one area, that is uh, uh, Kamatipur, it's Ahmad Mishra. Money, one crore, right? Eh, no? One crore per day. So half goes to the politician, half goes to the dalas, Garwali, and all everybody. So that money, easy money, is coming to the government. So why should they stop it? So I think uh, ultimately I'm not opposing anybody, but uh, ultimately I'm think I, I've heard that Ramdev is also opening a political party. So he will also become, he will also need money. So I think he will also enjoy it. <laughs> He explained that we need to mobilize all the whole uh, religious leader as uh, everyone appreciate and follow the leader. Uh, at the same time, I think what we should do is uh, being a, a Nepali based in the United States, uh, Kingdom, if uh, if you meet any political leader, I know that there are many visitors from Nepal, like minister, parliamentarians, and all these things, you should make a point that you should pressurize them because they are the one who should clean up this kind of crime or illegal trade in Nepal. So, your responsibility and role would be 
that pressurizing the ministers, policy policy makers to change the policy. As everyone is there, as he explained, the most people are there involved into the cabinet dance bar, gangsters, drawn, so called done. Because nowadays everyone is done in the Delhi and Delhi. They have gone. You can buy in two thousand rupees. So they are done. So they hold their area and they run the cabinet dance festivals. So police knows who's not doing what, but they are just keep uh, keeping their eyes closed. So we should put the pressure on the political parties and political leaders that they should now immediately take action to prevent this. Otherwise, uh, nobody will be able to. And I also I want to add here also. I think if we make uh, pressure on the government, things do change because. Uh, uh, there are there is anti trafficking uh, there is anti uh, H HIV AIDS so, so many days but there was never an anti trafficking day. Mighty Nepal always did it in April. We always did it in April in our own way, and we invited the government people, and they nicely came, and uh, they never they never thought of an anti trafficking day. But we pressurized them for three years, three years, and finally uh, from year before last year, they have said September fifth would be anti-trafficking day. So there was a change. So if you pressurize them, I think they will make a change. So I think Vishwaji is saying that for the political leaders, they have to change their attitude towards this issue. And our political leaders are not in the least bothered about any social issues. They are only bothered about the chair. And you know, just recently, they had uh, appointed nine uh, Commissioner in planning commission, and they never thought of appointing one woman who holds uh, in Nepal. Uh, women holds uh, 50 percent of the population in the country, and they are just uh, you know uh, giving all the members to one of the party. But they forgot women, and until and unless women are in the power in policy making level, nobody I and mean, there, there will be no change. I think because the men's behavior and attitude towards the issue is zero, so they don't feel that this is a priority. Yeah. I mean, I mean, um, the question is, you know, so when you read rehab in and then send it back to the village, uh, uh, there must have been places where the village or the community had rejected girls. How do you deal with this? How do you deal with it? You know, when the girls are rejected by the village or the community, once they get sent back. Send back to, to the park? To, to, the, to their own rejection. Yes. You know, yeah. 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 yeah, how do you deal with that rejection? We that kind of cases is very rare. It's very rare. Every parent wants their child back. No, it's not the parents. It's more the society. The society. Also, uh, about the society, I just explained, I think. Yeah. In, our, in our society, in the Nepali society, whatever you are, whoever you are, if you are economically strong, then people forget everything. Even they forget that you are a murderer or you are a killer, they forget everything. So what we started doing, I have already said, let me repeat it again, that uh, we started counselling the parents and after counselling the parents, we are supporting them to start small business in the village itself where they are doing their income. So if they are financially strong, then oh, they forget about what she was before.